I can't whistle. I wish I could whistle. I've never been able to whistle. What's cracking, fam? Team Money? Back up in the dungeon. Another day down in the dungeon. All by my lonesome. Just how I like it. I love it, actually. Uh, it's been a long week. Tired. Exhausted. Never ending. I thought today I was going to actually have a little bit of a short day, and that didn't end up happening at all. Um, so, yeah. Just getting home. Settled in a little while ago. And I have a ton of stuff to unbox for you guys. This huge package from Diabolic DVD. And then this Grindhouse Video Tampa box that I showed you yesterday. And then I have um, this bag from uh, Cavity Colors, which I'm stoked for. And also behind me, I have a new um, Fright Rags t-shirt, uh, Ghostbusters. I opened it up because I'm an idiot. Um, and it was confusing because it didn't come in the usual Fright Rags like black bag. So I was like, what the fuck is this? Uh, just in case, I didn't want to. I didn't want to like accidentally unbox more sack spray or ball trimmers or anything like that. So I tried to cover myself this time, but um, but it's cool. I like that shirt a lot. Super rad. And I also got. Um, all right. Well, let's see. Um, all right. So we'll, there's a few movies that I got over the last two days. Just like two that are open. I'll show you guys those in a sec before I do the unboxing. But um, let's do this first from Cavity Colors. Or gutter garbs, rather. It's gutter garbs, not cavity colors. Um, Got to give them their due. They're a great company. And what I love about gutter garbs and even cavity colors sometimes is that they do pullover hoodies. I actually prefer pullover hoodies to zip-up hoodies, like, completely. So any chance I get to get a cool pullover hoodie, um, I jump on, especially a horror one. Because most horror shirts, let's face it, they're all zip-ups. All the horror hoodies from, like, all these companies tend to be zip-ups, so. Um, but this is super rad. Some old-school Halloween simplicity. I absolutely love it. I, I love this, dude. I mean, dudes and dudettes, whoever you are watching my videos, I love this. It's awesome. It's so great. So, super stoked on that. Let's hope it fits. And, um, yeah, I just love it. It's so simple. I like simple things sometimes, most times. Um, so anyways, I got that, obviously. Um, is there anything else that I need to know about before I proceed? I guess, I guess we're good. All right, so, <clears throat> I got two flicks. Um, this actually came from Grindhouse Video Tampa, but I had placed a huge order with Mike and, um... I thought he had shipped everything together, but apparently this one went out on its own, which is fine. Um, he still is the man and helped me out big time So um, with the shipping. So uh, this came separately, and I opened it. Um, Stephen King's The Stand on Blu-ray. I believe for the first time ever. There was like a DVD, I don't know if it was Anchor Bay or something, floating around for a long time in like my local FYEs and I always was like when is the stand going to come on Blu-ray even though it's not one of my favorite Stephen King ad adaptations adaptations adaptions adaptations right um it's not one of my favorites but I gotta rewatch it because it's been so long I probably watched this in like 1995 in Florida on my grandma's couch on cable television that's probably how I saw the, the stand I know that's how I saw like Children of the Corn Part 4 um but anyway, so yeah, I grabbed that. That's cool. Uh, I don't know who put it out. I guess it's just like Paramount. Um, but yeah, there's hardly any. So it's a TV, TV movie, right? So it's part one, part two. There's four parts. So we'll check it out. It's from 1994. So yeah, uh, it's about sounds about right. Back in the days when I saw it. So this is beautiful, though. Uh, just came out. I love this movie. I love anything. Um, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, from Sleepy Hollow, the character, Ichabod. I love anything Headless Horseman, Ichabod. I love Covered Bridges. I just love the, I guess, story of Sleepy Hollow. It's so good. And my one of my favorite things to do every single Halloween, almost, with the exception of a few, uh, if I forget, but I usually don't, is to watch uh, the original Disney Sleepy Hollow short for Halloween, because I grew up doing that, like, every Halloween. Um, and I love it so much. Uh, so, yeah. And I, I did like this movie. I thought it was good. I'm not, like, the biggest Tim Burton fan, um, really. 
but I love this movie, and I, I mean, I, I don't mind Tim Burton, I just don't, I really hate Willy Wonka, um, but I know he has a big catalog and stuff, and this movie's really good, I'm not even the biggest Johnny Depp fan, but I like him in, like, Donnie Brasco, and, like, his older, more serious roles, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, I don't like Johnny Depp now, um, so, but anyways, that was, I digress, this is nice, it's like a media book, I don't know, uh, 20th anniversary Blu-ray media book edition, I guess, You've got, um, I don't know, 35 pages in here. It's a 30-page book, I think. 40 pages. Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, just some stills and talking about... Um, found among the papers of the late Diedrich Knickerbocker. Um, wow. So, a pleasing land of... I guess this has to do with uh, the story originally. I'm not really sure I should probably read it um but yeah I gotta I gotta watch this one again I love Sleepy Hollow though I love the atmosphere in this film too I remember when Johnny Depp was filming that movie he did like a uh interview on on um on MTV and I forget what he meant they asked him what his favorite band was or something at the time and he was like Marilyn Manson I swear I'm not dreaming that he said that but the interview was for it had just I think maybe Sleepy Hollow was coming out and he was promoting the film, or it had already come out and he was like promoting it shortly after. I'm not sure, but I'll never forget like that era. Uh, God, that was probably 1995 or 94. Um, but anyways, this is cool. I like it. I like the uh, material on the cover. It's kind of like I don't really know how to describe it. It's not. It's shiny, but it's not. Uh, I don't know. I can't describe it. But it's a material. I'm. I'm visually familiar with but i don't know how to describe it if you guys know if you can feel what i'm trying to say here um even though i'm not giving you much let me know let me know what that texture is all right let's get into the uh i swear to god i had something else but apparently i don't um i really thought i had something else but uh i don't think i do so all right so grindhouse video tampa here we go. You guys ready? Go grab a drink. Um, whatever. Whatever makes you happy. Cheers. Oh, wait. Hold on. Cheers. Cheers to you guys. All right. Oh, you know what I wanted to do, which I don't think I did in the beginning of this video? I wanted to shout out the man, my man, Greg Garwood. Once again, he came through, bought everything, a whole lot of films, and I just appreciate it. He always, you always support me, dude, um, and I just appreciate our friendship more than anything. You're a super good dude, uh, a rare breed, truly, um, and I just, I really appreciate the support because with your support. I can bring you more videos, everybody more videos, and uh, and that sort of thing. But I love you, bro. Thank you for being the man. So, shout out to Greg Garwood. Y'all should really try and get to know him. He's a super good dude. All right. If you don't already know him, Lewis Switcher. Love you, too. All right, so let's go. Let's go. Let's do this motherfucking thing, shall we? All right, so this is a stack of Gucci... This. Oh man, I see a lot of stuff. Kino Lorber. All right, I'll shut up and just start sharing. First up, Talking Walls. I actually kind of want to put this down. So, talking Walls. Uh, all these movies, most of these movies, as usual, I haven't seen. I mean, there's just so much like stuff that I just was never aware of. I always thought I had like. Like, I knew what was up with movies and stuff, and it really, you know, to a certain extent, I have seen a lot of movies, but there's a lot that I haven't, and I, I'm always reminded of that by uh, this, for example, Talking Walls. So this is a new one from Scorpion. Um, it's sort of like a...
thriller, I guess. A student who tapes sexual encounters in a Hollywood hotel for his thesis finds things go rocky when he falls for one of his subjects, uh, starring Sybil Danning. Okay, so that was it. But uh, <laughs> All right, yeah, so it's just like an obsession uh, thriller type movie. So that's cool. Talking Walls, it's from 1987, so that's cool. Super, super, super interesting. All right, next up we have... Um, Action Jackson. I've never seen this. Really want to check this one out. Probably some good uh, black exploitation. Not even black exploitation. More like black action, I guess you could say. Um, or just action, you could say. <laughs> but anyways, uh, it's uh, produced by Joel Silver. I never knew that. And the movie is from 1988. So late 80s action. Late 80s cheesy action. Like a blast from a 44 Magnum. Carl Weathers... Uh, makes Action Jackson... Okay, sorry. So, Carl Carl Weathers is the actor who was also in Predator Predator and Rocky. Um, sorry. <laughs> Could you tell I was reading that? He makes Action Jackson a hero who delivers the goods with charisma and excitement. He plays Detroit Police Sergeant Jericho Jackson, pitted against the brutal thugs of a ruthless auto tycoon, Peter Delafane, played by Craig T. Nelson, who's out to murder his way to political power. So we've got some awesome 80, late 80s action. And, um, yeah, I mean, bare bones as usual. This is a Warner Archive release, but had to swoop this one up. And then, let me see. Let me actually look at what I have here so I can kind of pick and choose what I want to show you first. I like to save the best for last sometimes. All right, so here's an interesting one that I've never seen before, but I know that Mike... Um, was he loves like 80s sex comedies and stuff like that so uh i knew he was kind of stoked on this one i think actually jeff nelson from uh, scream factory was the first person who kind of brought this movie that it was coming out to my attention because of course a lot of these movies i had never heard of until they get a blu-ray release um so yeah he had talked about it coming out um it's just a standard paramount release and i think it's a bdr if i'm correct yeah um I don't know. It doesn't look black on the bottom. I thought it was a BDR, but maybe not. But Skate Town USA, featuring, I could be wrong, um, but featuring the music of Earth, Wind, and Fire, the Jacksons, McFadden, Whitehead, tons of them. Um, the owner of a roller disco emporium in uh, Santa Monica uh, awaiting the start of his establishment's first annual roller disco contest. As the evening progresses, professionals give exhibition performances. Uh, zany patrons swarm the area an angry citizens committee and an angry citizens committee serves to drive the owner crazy so it's just kind of like a cheesy 80s com comedy uh, it's not really a sex comedy but it's roller skating comedy so I don't know kind of exploitative in its own right I don't know I am intrigued though I love me some good cheesy 80s culture movies so yeah um, this one I was actually really uh, excited about, Camp Wedding. I had not heard of this at all, uh, until I read it on, that Jesse, uh, I mean Mike, rather, was selling it. Um, it's from 2019, so, uh, it's a new movie, obviously. Uh, it goes without saying, right? Mia's wedding party is not too keen on transforming a dilapidated summer camp into the wedding venue of her dreams. When people begin disappearing in the night, that doesn't help either. So, some sort of... It, this is a BDR. I like the disc artwork, though. Um, some sort of modern slasher? Sounds good to me. It takes place uh, in a summer camp, and it's a slasher. I hope it's not, like, super budget, but Camp Wedding. If anybody's seen this one, let me know your thoughts, please. All right, next up, um, we have The Mindbenders. This is an old one, 1963, black and white, brand new 4K master of the film. I like when the cellophane is, like, loosey, so I can just use my finger. Sometimes it's tough, thicker. Uh, but anyways... When the dark side of the mind is opened, can it ever be closed again? A government scientist commits suicide while clutching a briefcase full of cash, and the police accuse him of being a communist spy. But when his friend Dr. Henry Langman, Longman uh, suspects that the death may have been the result of brainwashing, he decides to prove his theory by subjecting himself to sentry deprivation. 
deprivation. Can the doctor resist the experiment's sadistic side effects? Sensory depri deprivation. Uh, or will he fall under the control of the mind benders? Awesome. So that sounds good to me. Uh, kind of different, I guess. But Kino Lorber release. Reversible cover artwork as well. That's rad. I don't know. I kind of like the colors in the reversible cover artwork. What do you guys think? That's cool. I like that. Classy. And then you got that. I like the colors, but I almost like this image better. So I think for now, I don't know. It's a tough call. Let's see what it looks like with the reversible cover artwork. Yeah, I don't know. I don't love it, but for now, we'll keep that. So, The Mindbenders, Kino Lorber, 1963, black and white. This one I'm excited for as well. Kino Lorber had a lot this month. Uh, Phobia, and a lot of these releases are a couple weeks early. Mike and Jesse always get Kino stuff in pretty early. Um, so that's always great. And they have great prices, too. Their prices are like the same... Uh, compared to Amazon, especially for these guys, I think 19 bucks, uh, but uh, 19.99. But brand new 4K Master. This movie from 1980 is the phobia-ridden patients undergoing a unique therapy treatment with Dr. Peter Ross. Now face a new terror: murder. One by one, they're being killed off, and the finger points to everyone. Set them up and whittle them down. It's a favorite technique in whodunit suspense thrillers. And one of the masters is Phobia. Director John Huston. Uh, what did he do? They say the Maltese Falcon in Prezi's honor, but I know him from something else. I know I do. Did he do... Prophecy? No, I don't think he did. The one that Scream Factory's putting out? I don't know. I know him from something. Uh, see if you can identify the killer as the legendary filmmaker propels you into the most terrifying realm of all. Your deepest fears. So this sounds good, Phobia. Um, yeah, I like me some good psychological terror. Um, phobia, there we go. I've seen that cover artwork somewhere too. No reversible on that one. And last but not least for the Kino stuff from Grindhouse, I have a few Kino things from uh, from Jesse as well. I can't wait. Ah, why didn't they do a slipcover for this? Really? Like, I love this movie, it's so good. I'm so happy I'm holding this in my hand. I longed for this day. I love this movie. It's such a great slasher. Reminds me of Nailgun Massacre, but a higher budget Nailgun Massacre. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. Cool, you get some double dual cover artwork for this baby. Be nice if they gave a slip for this one, though. I love Nightmare Beach. If you guys haven't seen it, it's good, really good, uh, like second or third tier slasher that's pretty uh, obscure, I guess. It's a lot of fun, though. It's a solid movie, and John Saxon's performance is great. It's really good. Um, it's from 1988, too, so it's a late 80s slasher with a rad killer. Um, but yeah, you got an audio commentary by a film historian, interview with composer Claudio Simonetti, that's right, it's got an amazing Italian soundtrack. Uh, it includes both English and audio. Uh, so yeah, it's an Italian film, I think, initially. It's so good, though. Um, so, um, um, oh, and, uh, whoa, wait, let's back this up for a second. Who directed this? Uh, I thought, is it Umberto Lenzi? Notorious director, I think, but his, he's got, it says Harry Kirkpatrick. That may be one of his aliases. Um, I thought it was Lenzi, but anyways, um, let's see. I want to give you guys some sort of legit synopsis. A shockingly gory tale of a madman in a motorcycle helmet. I was trying not to spoil that. Uh, who's taking out young co-eds all over the sparkling sands of South Florida during spring break. I mean, there you go. That says it all. Check it out. It's good. It's good. It's definitely worth watching. I mean, like a thousand times. All right. Next up, we're getting into the big boy here, the Big Larry. By the way, this is a promotional shoot for Big Larry. Big Larry flashlights are really good. They're really, really bright. So if you want to get a Big Larry for your home and stick it on your refrigerator or anything because there's a magnet on the bottom, this is my charger. I use this to charge my pen, my oil pen. Zoop. Sticks like to the magnet up and then it falls off. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my demonstration. Go get you a Big Larry today. They're great. They, and you know what? I failed miserably at that. You know what this is good for? Trying to find movies late at night. I get to walk around with my stick 
can't tell you how many nights I carry this out of my room in my hand and just look desperately and it helps because it's really bright it really really points things out and if you're like me and you've got all your collection on like a thousand DVD racks which is ridiculous I don't recommend you do that um, these come in handy so get you a big Larry today get you a big Larry today all right guys I need a drink take a swig of my seltzer real quick here shit there's a straggler here at the bottom. I forgot to show you guys this. This is also from Grindhouse Video Tampa as well. A bucket of blood. I didn't really need this because I have the uh, Arrow video set, but what are you going to do? Um, I think I have the Arrow video set. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. Um... Anyways, this is an Olive Signature release, so it's really nice. I know... Oh, I think this has a Something Weird video release, maybe. Anyways, um, I dig these Olive... I like Olive. They put out some really good stuff. The problem is that their releases are really bare bones. So, they've been doing this line lately. Uh, it's called Olive Signature, where you get, like, a slip cover. They did it for, like, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, I think, and, like, maybe one other one or something. But it's like a box slip, sort of, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's just stuck. But, let's see. I'm trying to get it out of here. And it's a nice, they switched it up. Uh, I can't remember, actually. But it's a nice clear case. I can't remember if the other one was a clear case. But you get a booklet. You get reversible artwork. It's not cover artwork, but it's reversible artwork. Um, so, I mean, it's more like a leaflet, but still. It's, it's, they're, they're, it's like a souped up olive release basically uh and it has special features because excuse me as you know olive uh is not known for having very many special features so um if you like this movie they're pricey i think this was like almost 30 bucks uh but they're nice and um i had to grab it i mean i just had to i'm crazy like that uh hang on 2.2 it's gonna be a long video so Go get yourself a drink or something at this point. Um, I'm trying to find it, but I thought it was right here. Fuck, sorry guys. Alright, never mind. I don't know where it is right now. Now I'm going to be bugged out because I don't know where my all of video signature selections are kept. But I will grab my big Larry and find it right after this video, that's for sure. Alright, sorry. <laughs> Let's get into this now. Diabolic DVD. For Bucket of Blood, there are tons of special features. Uh, mastered from a 4K scan, uh, and then uh, you got Creation is all is Creation is all else is not. Roger Corman on a Bucket of Blood. So you've got all kinds of like interviews with screenwriters, directors. Um, so that's awesome. When was this movie? 1959. So it's old, but that's awesome. I'm stoked I had that. All right. Now we're getting into the juicy portion, the 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 real juicy portion. Um, I don't even know where to begin. This could be like a, three videos in itself. This is a big package. Uh, two, four. Just trying to figure out what I want to show you guys first. Nice. We've got Kinos in their own little package. Jesse, the best. Jesse is the best have to say he is the man oh so there aren't any media books in this i thought i had media books i'm going crazy all right so we're going to start with now that i've got i see everything here we're going to start with hopefully you guys can just see everything a film from scorpion called cover girl um jeff conway that's cool uh, brand new 2009 HD scan. Um, it's not a horror movie at all. It's like a glam movie. Um, but kind of drama. <laughs> I don't fucking know what I'm talking about. Let me see. A young girl enters the modeling industry wanting... Listen, it says... This is how it's worded on the back of this. A young girl enters the modeling industry wanting to becoming a supermodel. 
It should be a young girl enters the modeling industry, period. Wanting to become a supermodel, and then she gets the chance. This is the worst. She gets the chance meeting with a wealthy entrepreneur who puts it, her in a career launching campaign. He's determined to make her into the face of the 80s in this sexy drama starring Jeff Conaway. So we've got one of those like totally 80s showbiz movies with the awesome soundtracks and stuff. So Cover Girl, uh, Scorpion, 1983. All right, and then this one I was kind of on the fence. Like, do I need it? No, I don't. But I grabbed it. My Boyfriend's Back. Uh, somebody put this out, right? I think it was Mill Creek, maybe. This movie's great, so... I mean, it's just fun. Um, I feel like y'all know... Oh, cool, you get a reversible cover artwork on this, too. Awesome, the original. That's great. I love this. I love when Kino does reversibles. This movie's awesome. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's really, really good. From 1993. More of a comedy, but it's still fun. It's just still good horror. Um, Alright, so... More Kinos. Let's see what's in package number two. Alright, so this one. A film by Elias Gut. Am I sitting too far away? Sorry. Um, powerful and sublime to be sought out, savored and shivered to. A downward spiral into madness and devastation. Um, something is missing in Tom's life. Every day he goes through the motions, becoming increasingly detached from those around him. His best friend Dan thinks he has the solution, a mysterious video he's got to see to believe. What Dan shows him leaves Tom unsettled, flooding his mind with disturbing images and desires, and binding the two friends together with its ugly secret. One video soon follows another to an, and another, blurring the line between reality and voyeuristic fascination, and threatening to dismantle everything around them. So, this was dirt cheap. Um, I think it was under 10 bucks. I think. Uh, and he had sold out of all of them at first, so I wanted to grab them because a bunch of people... Sometimes when a bunch of people buy something, it's a good indicator that it's good. Not always, but especially in the like rarer um, horror titles stuff. But this one is from uh, 2012. So, it's directed by... I don't know Elias, so... I apologize, I don't know if he's like a big underground filmmaker or whatever, but I've never heard of it. Um, Alright, let's see. I'm going to save those. Alright, let's do some Kino. Uh, so I got R Rutger Hauer, Rest in Peace, uh, Wanted, Dead or Alive. Um, no reversible. This case is dirty too, it's got like... something on it but uh all right sorry brand new 2k master just some good 80s action mid 80s action starring the great late great rutger hauer um a lot of good kino a lot of good kino man kino's been slaying it all right so this is really nice don't look now um it's a media book um i did recently buy the i think it was the second site box set or something and it sold out it went out of print really quickly but this movie's great so it's worth having um multiple copies not really but you know what i'm saying i'm crazy yeah i'm crazy with it you guys know that y'all know that shit already all right so but it's nice it is really nice steelbook if you like steelbooks but um totally unnecessary to be completely honest if you have either the uh Studio Canal or Second Sight, I can't remember who made it, or the uh, Criterion Collection edition as well. I originally had that, and then I grabbed that box set. Now I have this, because I'm loco. All right, so let's get into... Um, this sounded cool. So this is a new one from Black Fawn. And uh, they put out a movie similar to this, Psycho Legend of the Something Forest Ranger. And that wasn't very good. It was probably one of my least favorite. I think that was Black Fawn who did that. Uh, but they're a Canadian production company and they make movies, I think. Uh, they definitely put movies out on Blu-ray. And most of them have been good. But the Psychopathic Forest Ranger one, I didn't love. I forget the name of it exactly. But 
This one's called the Ranger. I just got confused for a sec because I thought maybe they just re-released that, but this is appears to be a different movie. Um, after a run-in with the cops at a punk show, Chelsea and her pals flee the city in search of a place to lay low. Running to the security of Chelsea's old abandoned family cabin in the woods, they fall under the watchful eye of an overzealous park ranger who holds a secret from Chelsea's past. So, I don't know if this is, like, loosely based on the other one, or if this is, I don't know, it's a sort of similar present, pre premise, but maybe they're just using the psychopathic... Am I having a deja vu, or am I going crazy? I don't even know. Um, honestly, let me know, guys, if this has anything to do with that other one. Legend of the Psychopathic Forest Ranger, I think is what it was called, something like that. But, let me know, does this have anything to do with that? Uh, I like this premise, though. It sounds like something I would like, so I'm just going to pop this open real quick. How are we doing for time? We're at 30 minutes. Are you guys ready for another 12 at least? Um, cool. So you get reversible cover artwork, which is the exact same. I had a feeling that was going to happen. I really don't even... Oh, so one of them is English, one of them is French. So we'll go with English. I think we're speaking English, right? Um... That wasn't funny. It wasn't. Um, but yeah, so Black Fawn puts out the Ranger. <laughs> this has been a long update. All right. Um, I guess we'll go with the Kino stuff, and then we'll go with the Arrow stuff last. So I have like four Kino titles and then two Arrows, so... Stay, stay with me here, guys. It's going to be good. All right. First up, we have... Um, these are all awesome. I mean, Zoltan, Hound of Dracula from Kino. I got to say, this uh, uh, September has been Kino's month. Definitely. I don't know if these titles are like have October release dates because I know I got them early. Um, but, man, Dracula's Dog is the uh, alternate title for this one, so... Bam. And, bam. I want to say Vinegar Syndrome put this out, but I don't think they did, right? I don't know. But I dig that. That's cool. I dig both, to be honest. I kind of like the name. The Zoltan, Hound of Dracula. Better. We're going to rock with that for right now. I hate when that happens. So when they get like crinkly, you know, when you don't, when it's not just not right. There we go. All right. So, anyways, this is 1977 killer dog flick. Awesome. And then we have uh, sudden terror. Never seen this one before. 1970, brand new 4K master. I'm telling you, man, Kino is slaying. Um, reversible cover artwork, and this looks dope, too. So you got Sudden Terror, and then you got Eyewitness, which is maybe the alternate title. I kind of dig that a lot, actually. I like the orange, but I also kind of dig the pink. I don't know. Tough call. But for now, brand new 4K Master, I already said that. John Hugh, 1970. Living on the island of Malta, Ziggy, an 11-year-old boy with an overactive imagination and a habit of telling wild lies. But when he sees the brutal assassination of a visiting African president by two rogue policemen, nobody will believe his story. Can Ziggy convince anybody that he is telling the truth before the psychopa psychotic, <laughs> psychopathic, psychotic cops are able to hunt down and murder the only witness? Little Ziggy? This is no ordinary boy who cried wolf story. Legendary director John Hugh, The Legend of Hell House and Twins of Evil, packs sudden terror with plenty of tense style, stunning locations, and startling violence. Susan George, Lionel Jeffries, Jeffrey Kemp, Peter Vaughn, Peter Bowles, and Tony Bonner co-star in this shocking and terrifying suspense thriller. Featuring music by the legendary British art rock band Fairfield Parlor and Van Der Roff Generator. I don't know who those guys, but... What do I know? I don't know much. Eyewitness, a.k.a. Sudden Terror. Sounds really good. And 
so psyched for this one. And Soon the Darkness, that title gets me every time. From 1970, two young British nurses bicycling through the desolate French countryside, a mysterious stranger on a lonely stretch of road. The women become separated and soon after, one of them disappears. Now the remaining girl, alone and frightened, begins an increasingly desperate search for answers among the strangely uncooperative locals. Where is her friend? Where was there a murder? And as soon as the darkness approaches, is the killer now stalking her? Pamela Franklin from The Legend of Hell House, coincidentally, even though this isn't directed by John Hugh, um, and Michael Doltrice from The Blood of Satan's Claw, on Satan's Claw, co-star in this unsettling shocker directed by Robert Fuest, the abominable Dr. Fibes director. And soon the darkness remains a favorite of thriller fans for its sexual menace, sinister style, and one of the most quietly chilling final twists in 70s British cinema. Sounds awesome. Cool. And we got this weird, like, reversible artwork. Strange, but I do like this much better. I'm hearing like this weird sound. I think it's my bubbles, my seltzer fizzing. But um, yeah, I'm really stoked on this one. I might watch this tonight, actually. I changed my mind. Originally, I was going to watch uh, The Prey tonight. Um, but I think I'm going to watch this. I love that name. All right. Last up, before we get into two Arrow titles, we have... Baby Blood, finally making its way to Blu-ray. It's time to feed the baby. In this vicious, in a, oh wait, Parasite's coming out soon too. That's awesome. I wish I had Parasite to show you guys tonight. That would be like the ultimate. Nah, they shit on Baby Blood. No reversible cover artwork here. Um, but uh, it is a ferocious parasite from the dawn of creation, surviving centuries in search of the one thing it needs, to be born of a human. But when this cunning creature slithers into a sexy circus performer, it demands gallons of fresh blood to grow stronger. Now this reluctantly expected mommy and her chatty mutant fetus are off on a cross-country killing spree, where prenatal care means violent carnage and the ultimate mother's milk is baby's blood. That is amazing. That is how you write a synopsis, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I remember... I don't know if I've seen this, but I definitely remember hearing that it's batshit crazy. Um, so, yeah, I was thinking that there's a... I don't know. I might be mixing this up with something else, but sounds great. Love killer babies. Or mutant fetuses, kind of like... Um, the fuck is that one called? Um, from... God, I have the worst memory ever. The suckling. All right. I'm getting tired. we got to wrap this up. Two more. Arrow video. Toys are not for children. I've never seen this movie. Go figure. Kind of lame reversible cover artwork. Kind of simple. If you like simple artsy type things, you might gig. But for me, I do like the... Uh, epitome of Aero Video. I mean, that's like their color scheme right there. I don't know how many times they've used these colors on their... But Toys Are Not For Children, and I still love it. I continue to totally dig it. Um, psychological trauma and aberrant sexuality abound in this twisted 1972 tale of a young woman whose severe daddy issues send her on an unforgettably bleak downward spiral. Brand new 2K restoration of the film, original, uncompressed, blah, 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 uh, subtitles. Uh, then we get into Nightmare USA, author Stephen Thrower on Toys Are Not For Children and the career of director Stanley A. Brasloff. Uh, Dirty Dolls, femininity, perversion, and play. My tattoo's starting to itch. Fuck. Itchy. Um, Grim, oh, yeah, sorry, uh, so yeah, all kinds of goodness on this release, um, as always, in Arrow fashion. There is a booklet as well. Slaughterhouse-Five, coming soon. 
from Arrow Video as well. And yeah, you get a booklet, first pressing only, so get on it if you care about that kind of thing. It's just complete with a booklet, I think. Um, so last but not least, we got a big guy uh, coming early as well, I think. I don't think this is out yet. I had pre-ordered this from Jesse a while ago. Macabre Visions. Beautiful box set. I could do a video in this alone, and I'm already at 40 minutes, so... The films of Mario Baba finally, finally get an Aero Video Blu-ray box set upgrade. Um, yeah, I've, I have those. I was thinking about those uh, DVD box sets that are really nice. Uh, I don't think Aero Video put them out, but I have those in my closet, and I'm I was kind of yearning for the day to upgrade to blue, even though those are nice. I forget who put those out. They did like two Baba series. But anyways, uh, Black Sunday, The Girl Who Knew Too Much, Black Sabbath, which is... Black Sabbath is probably one of my favorite... It's definitely one of my favorite anthology films, but probably for me, I love it. I don't know. I know everybody loves Black Sunday, which is great. I mean, A Bay of Blood. Just saw the classics on this. So, Baron Blood, Lisa and the Devil, Rabid Dogs, A Bay of Blood, Five Dolls for an August Moon... Kill Baby Kill, Black Sabbath, The Girl Who too, Knew Too Much, and Black Sunday. So you've got two, four, six, eight, nine films, all of which have st standard Arrow releases. But uh, it's about time we get like a Mondo set, so I'm stoked on this. Um, stunning Collection represents one of the Italian unsung heroes at the height of his creativity. So it's just a great selection of Bava's films, obviously. Uh, special edition contents. I'm trying to see how many discs this is, but um, all kinds of stuff here, guys. Limited edition packaging, uh, documentaries on Mario, Mario Bava, uh, alternate cuts of Black Sunday, The Girl Who Knew Too Much, Black Sabbath, Bay of Blood, Baron Blood, Lisa and the Devil, and Rabbit Dogs. I think that's everything. Audio commentaries on every film by Bava biographer and expert Tim Lucas, which is cool. Numerous interviews with critics and cast and crew members. They're getting lazy on the backs of these here. Uh, Mario Bava, Maestro of the Macabre, documentary profile of the director. Hosted by Mark Kermode and featuring interviews by Joe Dante, John Carpenter, and Tim Burton. The Devil's Daughter, a video essay by critic Kat Ellinger. Uh, multiple introductions by author and critic Alan Jones. Yellow, Sami Terran's short um, film homage to Bava Cinema. Multiple theatrical trailers and TV spots. Limited edition packaging. Collector's souvenir hardcover book. Holy shit. Featuring writing by Matt Bailey, Alan Jones, Kier La Janice. David Kearns and all bunch of people. Much, much more. Get it while it's hot. Get it. This wasn't even that expensive. I think it was like 60 bucks. I could be wrong. But that's really good for like nine Baba films with a heart. Baba. 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 For nine Baba films uh, with a hardcover book. Really sexy. I'm not going to open this because I'm tired. It's been a long update. I'm sorry. I should. It deserves it. But it's that time. Something signaling me to get to a movie and fall asleep soon. I gotta put all this shit away. Thank you guys for watching. We are at 43 minutes. That's one of the longest videos I've ever done. If you're still here, I love you. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.